To learn a bit more about web security scanning, let's take a look at Vega, a free web security analyzer. Vega is available from Subgraph. It uses the Java runtime environment. So if you don't have that on your system, you may want to download and install it before installing Vega. I already have Java and Vega on my system, so let's get straight into it. The main page shows a menu bar and four panels, a website view, scan alerts, scan info, and identities. These are all empty. Notice at the top right, we can select either the scanner view, which we'll look at now, or the proxy view, which we'll look at next. We can use Vega as a scanner to point at the website and scan it, or we can use it as a proxy to monitor websites as we visit them in our browser. Right now, I'll start by selecting the icon on the top left the bullseye with a plus in it, to start a scan. When I select this icon, a panel pops up for me to enter a target website address. I've got a website on Hydra, so I'll enter 10.1.1.51 and press Next. Vega then displays the test modules it's going to run. As a standard, Vega will run 12 of its 17 predefined injection tests and 23 of its 27 predefined response processing tests. Once you become familiar with what Vega provides in each test, you may want to include or remove some of them from a scan. For this scan, I'll take the default tests. The next two tabs are for advanced website analysis. We won't use them in this course, but let's look at them briefly. The authentication options screen allows me to configure Vega to scan a website using an identity and to set cookies before we scan. The parameters screen allows me to set advanced options to exclude parameters from the scan. I'll press finish and the scan starts. As the scan proceeds, the website view will be populated with the structure of the target website and of all websites referenced from this one. At the same time, in the scan information panel, a summary of alerts will be displayed and the number of web pages being scanned will be shown. This is continuously updated as Vega crawls through the website, finding new sets of pages. If I wanted to, I could pause the scan at any time by pressing the pause button at the top of the scan alerts panel. And if I wanted to cancel it, I could do that using the red cross on the top toolbar. The scan has now finished. The scan alerts panel alerts us to the issues that Vega has detected. If I expand this, I can see the number of alerts by website, in this case, just the one. By expanding the website, I can see the risk levels and by expanding those, I can see the issues. Finally, another expansion will show me the pages with those issues. If I click on one of the pages, detailed information about the alert will be provided in the scan information panel. This shows details of the problem, some commentary, the impact, and a suggested remediation. By clicking on the top line of the scan alerts, the issue summary is displayed once again. On the bottom left of the screen, is an icon which looks like a computer screen. That's the console log icon. When I click on it, the logging screen will be displayed. As I scroll to the right, we can see the log details of the analysis. By pressing the console icon again, this screen will be hidden. Let's select an alert and press the right hand of the two bottom icons, the request icon. The pop-up window shows the HTTP request and response. If you're a developer, this can be useful for debugging the web pages. I'll press the request icon again to remove the window. Let's take a quick look at the menu items. In the file menu, we have an entry reset workspace. When Vega closes, it stores all of the scans in the workspace and recovers them the next time it starts up. By selecting the reset workspace item, all scans will be immediately removed from the workspace. Note that Vega doesn't ask for confirmation. In the Website View panel, I can expand the target to see the website construction. While we've scanned the whole site, Vega allows us to set the scope for partial scans. This is useful on large sites for running testing on critical or frequently changing areas of the website. I'll select Scan and Edit Target Scope. This provides a pop-up window which allows me to add a new target scope. I'll press Add and then Admissions, Enter and OK. I can now right click on the admissions leaf and add that to the current scope. I can also exclude part of this area. Let's right click on the cross domain leaf and exclude this from the current scope. I'll select scan 
and edit target scope once again. And we can see we've set up a target scope for the scan. Let's look at a couple of other menu items. Window gives me two functions that I can select, preferences and reset perspective. Selecting preferences displays a window with three options, which let me set the communications behavior of the scanner, the proxy configuration parameters, and the scanning options. I'll leave these all as default for the moment, but we'll come back to the proxy settings in the next section. In this section, I'll cover how to use Vega to run in what is known as proxy mode. It's known as this because we configure our browser to send HTTP requests to Vega, which will then send them on to the internet. Likewise, the responses will return to Vega and Vega will pass them back to our browser. This lets Vega review the full request and response information to decide whether there are any security concerns. If there are, it raises an alert in the same way it would do for a website scan. To do this, we need to configure both Vega and Windows. Firstly, let's check what proxy port Vega expects to listen on. Let's open Window, Preference, and expand the proxy item. This allows us to click on the listener to see that Vega listens on port 8888. We could change this, but it's fine as long as we configure Windows the same way. OK, let's close that. To configure a proxy on Windows 8, I'll click on the Start button, Control Panel, Internet Options. I'll then select Connections, Land Settings. Then I'll check Proxy Server, and we can see that the port is already set to 8888. We'll close these windows, and we're now configured to proxy. Back at Vega, I'll select the proxy button at the right-hand side above the Scan Info pane. Under the menu at the top left, there are now a set of proxy controls. The first thing I need to do is to set the target for the scan capture. For this, we'll go to the Hydra website again. I'll press the network icon in the proxy controls and add Hydra's IP address as a new target. Press Enter and then close the window. Let's start proxying. I'll press the green start icon to start up the proxy server and the computer icon to start the proxy scan. I've got a browser set up ready to connect to the Hydra server, so I'll go there. Once the web page is loaded, I can go back to Vega and turn the web page scanning off. We've got 10.1.1.51 showing at the top of the website view, and below it more web pages that have been accessed from this website. We can see that we also have two alerts, a medium and a low. If we click on the medium risk issue, we can see that it's the same local file system path that we saw in the full scan. Of course, the proxy has only seen the pages we've downloaded from the website, so it can't tell us that issues exist in some of the other areas of this website. So that's all for Vega as an example of a web application security scanner. And now you have a good foundation in the practical aspects of web application security.